why the stuff is coming out, why the Fanon Center is located in Los Angeles. Think about that. And then think about what we're proposing for our education. So a man did think about that. This was Professor James at University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. It was set up as Arkansas A&M, so they did not intend to have black professors studying Greek scholars. And here's a black classics professor who was educated in England at Columbia University and who read what the Greeks wrote themselves. And so what you find in this book, which was out of circulation almost from the very time it was published in 1954, 20 years it was out of print. And we finally brought it back into print after we found it was sold under the counters, bootleg copy. If you bought this book, you had to buy it in a brown paper bag wrapping. No one knew who the publisher was, you know, and we had to find that. So people were selling it under counters in black bookstores. We resurrected this book, George James's Stolen Legacy. What did he say? He said simply that the Greeks confessed that they were taught by Africans, that Plato confessed that he went to school in Africa, that Aristotle went to school in Africa, and that before them, Pythagoras went to school in Africa because he was recommended by Thales to go to school in Africa because Thales had been to school in Africa. That's where he got his, quote, four elements that bear his name. He stole those from Africa, the diagram of opposites. And so he saw that Pythagoras was a genius, like Terman said. And he said, Thag? <laughs> If you really want to get ahead, you'll go to Egypt. <laughs> and he did. And they liked Pythagoras in Egypt. And so he came home and he got something named after him. A theorem. A square plus B square equals C square. The Pythagorean theorem. And Aristotle went to Egypt after Alexander the Great, his teacher, conquered Egypt. And Alexander said, what? or Alexander, his student. Alexander said, what can I give to my beautiful teacher, Aristotle? Nothing would serve him more than to have the best books in the world. Now remember, Herodotus was supposed to be the father of history. You know, and we're looking at around 323 AD. Herodotus is about 500. So in 323, when Arist or, or Alexander conquers Egypt, we find him now collecting books from all over the world. Now how do you get the fatherhood <laughs> of disciplines where disciplines have already been publishing from all over the world? In other words, discover the fragments that were discovered by Aristotle and Alexander, collected in the library of Alexandria, named after Alexander. And those books came from all over the world. In other words, just because Europe wasn't reading and wasn't literate at the time didn't mean other people weren't. And so that was discovered and then bore the name. So Aristotle comes out with a lot of books in his name that he could not, he could not possibly have written. Over a thousand books that bear his name. Now he didn't say he wrote them. His students said he wrote them. Plato told the truth. He didn't pass uh, the EAT. That's the Egyptian aptitude test. <laughs> He actually failed the first two times. Two times he was turned down for admission to the institution of higher education. It was only after he got a good recommendation that they saw potential in the boy. <laughs> now these aren't things that you have to make up. You go back and read what Greek said. You go back and read Homer. That's the oldest literature you can find in what would later become Europe, and it wasn't even Europe at that time. That's in Greece. And that's the Iliad and the Odyssey. And what's Homer talking about? He's talking about black people in the Iliad and the Odyssey. Ethiopians up at Troy helping get people out of trouble because they got Trojan horses running back and forth and all of that. And here's Memnon up there with a whole troop of Ethiopians. Wonderful Ethiopians, according to Homer, so good that the gods of Greece leave Greece and go home to be with the Ethiopians where they came from. God, dog, that gets to be interesting. Because they said it. I didn't say it. You can read it. You've got money enough to go over and buy that from the Stanford bookstore. Or you can go, if you can't buy it, and check it out of the library. They have that one in there. Iliad and the Odyssey, they taught me that in high school. 
We just didn't know that Ethiopians referred to us. And that's how we lose. So this man is bringing it back, stolen legacy. He said that philosophy that you talk about, the history that you talk about, the religion that you talk about, just like Valny said, all came from African people. You won't find this in encyclopedias. You got to ask yourself the question. If you can't find what the Greeks said in encyclopedia, you cannot find it in your textbooks, in your philosophy courses, Introduction to Philosophy. When you study the history of mathematics and the history of physics, when you study chemistry, which is named for Africa, Kimi, <laughs> for Egypt, which was the old name for Cam or Egypt, or Ham, if you want, which was our side, according to the legend, <laughs> not Shem, which was their side, according to the legend. So if you can't find yourself in what is now being taught, you have to ask yourself, what has higher education come to? Because it was together in Egypt. It used to be grammar, rhetoric, logic, arithmetic, astronomy, geometry, and music, the seven liberal arts. That was the nature of higher education. When you say you're going to major in liberal arts, the university doesn't even tell you what that is anymore because it isn't even liberal arts anymore. You didn't take one of them. There were no majors in Egypt. If you took liberal arts, you took all of them. 